السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن وله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقد تمل لساني يفقه قولي Today inshallah we will be starting off the 13th juz of the Holy Quran and uh, the 13th juz starts off from the middle of Surah to Yusuf so as I said the bulk of Surah to Yusuf will be recited today hence we will discuss it today uh, and this is the most productive surah meaning uh, sorry the most productive story in the Holy Quran what that means is that there's a lot of lessons tons of lessons which can be derived from this particular surah scholars have written books and books not only in one volume but in multiple volumes but one thing before I get into surah to Yusuf uh, a disclaimer that I want to mention with regards to what I mentioned yesterday before I forget I had to mention it yesterday but I forgot it is brought to my atten attention by one of our dear elders may Allah preserve him the, the the atonement that I mentioned yesterday for sins the virtue that I mentioned and I said follow up an evil deed with a good deed and that good deed will wipe out the evil deed now this particular virtue is specifically with regards to small sins it's only for small sins, not big sins. Big sins require tawbah. Big sins require tawbah. If you have perpetrated or committed a big sin, now what is a big sin? That's a topic for another day, inshallah. You, but you could actually research about that. That requires tawbah. If it, it's with the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you need to do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if it has got to do with the rights of humans, of humans for, in, for instance you steal someone's uh, right or you dispossess him of his right then you will have to apologize to him and you have to give him back what's due to him that's very important so this is with regards to yesterday inshallah um, uh, today surah to yusuf i said inshallah i promise that we will discuss a few lessons with regards to surah yusuf tomorrow is a weekend so i guess i can take a bit of more time today everyone is at calm Insha'Allah. Now, Surah Yusuf is very long. It's very extensive. There are so many lessons and events that happened, and Yusuf والسلام, went through multiple events. I will mention, I'll just give you a run through the events that took place in the life of Yusuf والسلام, very quickly without going into the details and the nitty gritties. First and foremost, Yusuf والسلام, sees a dream, very beautiful dream. He sees a dream. What's the dream? He says to his father that I saw 11 stars. والشمس والقمر and the sun and the moon, 13 celestial objects prostrating before me. Now Yaqub was a prophet. He knew what the dream, dream meant, but he did not uh, interpret it to Yusuf All what he told him, what the Quran mentions is don't mention this dream to your brothers. I'll get to that point. Somehow the brothers get to know the dream. They're filled with envy and jealousy. They plot and scheme against him. They grab him, abandon him, take him away from his father, ditch him in a dark well. He stays in a dark well for a couple of days. A caravan passing by picks him up, takes him to Egypt. He is sold in the markets of Egypt. I mean, this is a prophet to be. He's sold in the market of Egypt as merchandise as much in dies the Quran says that he was sold at a pittance he was sold at no value at all the governor of Misr bought him and he comes home with him and he tells his wife that look after him very well he gets into another test the wife of the governor gets infatuated with Yusuf والسلام, and she accuses him she wanted to indulge in haram with him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somehow protects him she puts the blame on him he carries the back and he is sent into jail and he lives in jail for many years many many years and then he comes out of jail then now the story takes a spin then comes the good times for Yusuf he's vindicated he's proven innocent and then he becomes the governor of Egypt in fact the ruler of Egypt then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings back his brothers to his feet. And they don't know him. In the court of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam, Yusuf alayhi salatu salam recognizes each one of them by their faces. But they know nothing who the person on the throne is. He takes his time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes things easy for him. He takes Binyamin, his brother from his mother, 
with him, keeps him with him, and then a couple of years pass by. Yaqub all this period, and this is decades by the way, this is decades, it just didn't unfold in two days, one week, one month, it's decades. Yaqub out of sadness, due to the loss of his most beloved son, Yusuf he goes blind. He cried so much in his life that he went blind. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he used to recite this surah in Salatul Fajr, most often he used to read this surah and he was murdered, assassinated. He was stabbed when he was reciting the surah. He said he used to reach this ayah, he used to pose and get into, uh, uh, he used to sob so uh, profusely that the entire masjid filled with the Sahaba used to weep. Nonetheless, then Yusuf wasalam's dream materializes. They come to know that the guy on the throne was our brother we ditched in the well. And then the, the dream that he saw decades back, probably 40, 50 years down the line, materializes and transpires. And what was the dream? 11 stars that manifested to be his 11 brothers. And the sun and the moon, his mother and father prostrated before him. Now that was a prostration of honor at that time of those nations. They used to have that. We don't have it in our sharia anymore. Hence, we can't bow before anyone. We can't do sujood to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this is the, the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu salam in a nutshell. What do we learn from this? I might point out probably just three lessons. Number one is, if you have a dream in life, and I'm not speaking about a dream that you see at night, I'm speaking about life dreams, aspirations. If you have an aspiration, a desire, or a dream that you need to fulfill, know that before it materializes, you might go through so many things. Excuse my language, but what we use in our times, the normal lingo is that I went through hell before I got to this point. This is exactly what Yusuf went through. Not only was he abundant by his family, his brothers, not only was he neglected, not only did he had to spend days without food and drink in the darknesses, isolated in the world, not only was he accused, was his honor denigrated, not only did he remain in jail for years, but so many things happened to him. Then his dream materialized. Whenever you're going through this process in life, understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is behind the will. Understand that the person who puts you through those predicaments and plights that you're going through is the very same Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will remove you from that and make you see light. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is behind everything. Take the example of gold. It's merely a stone in the mine. But once it's brought out, it goes through a process. It goes through intensive heat filtrations. It's molded. It's hit up with hammers or anything. Then it is turned into something. The redundant elements from it are separated and removed. Then it turns into a necklace or a ring. Then you see it with that price tag in an expensive mold or in the form of a 24 karat gold bar. But before it got there, think what it went through. Same thing in life. Before you reach that pedestal, before you reach the pinnacle of your life, you'll have to go through a lot of things. And when Yusuf got there, you know what was his dua? Allahumma fa'ad rabb, rabbi qad ataytani min al-mulk. You have given me the entire empire of Misr. Wa'allamtani min ta'wil ahadith. You taught me the interpretations of dreams. Fa'atur as-samawati wal-ard. You're the one who created the heavens and the earth and the universe entirely. Anta waliyi fi dunya wal akhirah. You're my guidance in this world and in the hereafter. This was his conclusion. Tawafani muslima. Give me death upon Islam. Wa alhaqni bi salihin. And when my soul reaches you, elevated to the status of the righteous. When he got to that point in life, the pinnacle of ecstasy. This was his dua. So humbled. This is the first thing. Number two. Speaking about dreams, when you have an aspiration that you want to fulfill in life, don't divulge it to people. You really don't know who could be a friend or a foe. Not even your brothers. We learned this from the story of Yusuf And bear in mind, these were the sons of a prophet. 
Yaqub if they could possibly have envy and jealousy against their own brother, what about us as normal people? We're not even children of uh, prophets. Can you imagine? Never divulge your secrets to someone until when it materializes. Let it grow within yourself. Work behind it. Only, even the Prophet ﷺ said, if you see a good dream at night, if you see a good dream, narrate it to only a person you're comfortable with. A person who you know is a bona fide brother or a bona fide, genuine, true friend. But in this days and times that you live in, Allah knows best who that person could possibly be. Number three, something very important we understand from this story is al ainu haqq The evil eye is a reality. The evil eye is a reality. We spoke about hasad. Another very dangerous spiritual sickness. The evil eye. We out there are exposed to thousands of eyes. Who is casting an evil eye against you is known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. If you do not take the preventative and protective measures that is required of you, then you are putting yourself into danger by your own self. At the end of the day, you should blame your own self. You should blame your own self. How could we protect ourselves from the evil eye? Most importantly, your morning and evening adhkar. Wallahi, thumma wallahi, thumma wallahi, I swear in the masjid. If there's anything that can protect you from hasad and the evil eye is your morning and evening remembrances. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, if you recite that, nothing in the heavens, nothing on earth can harm you. Even if a person, thousand people are casting an evil eye against you, it will not, it becomes like a solid, cemented barricade around you. It hits it and it bounces back without affecting you. These days we have apps. Download it. Read those adhkar. Sit after Fajr 10 minutes. After Maghrib 10 minutes. Read them. Go through them. Ayatul Kursi, morning and evening. The last three surahs, the last three quls, morning and evening. Before you go to bed, do it. These are things the Prophet ﷺ gave us. These are things the Prophet ﷺ gave us. Another thing is, don't flaunt your bounties before people, specifically in the realm of social media. Don't go around taking pictures of yourself and your day and posting it like, you know, this is what I'm having for lunch, this is what I'm uh, buying, this is what I'm uh, getting a new job and this. And sometimes people pretentiously pose things and post things they don't even own to impress people who are not even bothered about them. Buy things they can't even afford. How about we could take selfies of our own hearts and our own selves and post it on social media and see what the reactions would be. If our, our, us, ourselves, we could like to see our souls and how dirty they are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the... I would advise everyone to go read Surah to Yusuf. Yeah? And understand the lessons that are there. They're very valuable. Very valuable lessons. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to do that. Assalamu alaikum.